Since they came out in April 2017, I always wanted to play Karaj and Overlord's Army. The rules behind them always look so captivating. An almost all shooting, flying gunline army facing off against Age of Sigmar orcs in nice and shining armor. I mean, what's not to love? Well, the models. These things, they just ain't my jam. Pretty sweet mustache guns though, I'll give them that. And they are just way too expensive for my taste. Ooh, ouch. And I bet you felt this way about an army too. Maybe you love the idea of playing three or four giant walkers in 40k, but the Imperial Knights look just a little bit too much like Quasimodo for you. Or maybe the zippy quick movement shenanigans of elves or space favorite elves appeal to you, but you know, then you'd have to paint elves. Ugh. Well, the good news is, you don't have to. Hey there, Nick with CZ Minis here, and today I'm going to show you how to meet a thousand point Age of Sigmar army without using a single model from GW. I mean, I'll probably use a couple bits though. There are a boatload of third party model companies out there that make minis perfect for converting a Warhammer army. By the way, converting can mean a couple different things. One meaning is to repurpose kits within a game range to make another type of army. Kind of like these Blood Knights I'm working up for a Soul Blight Grave Lord's Force. Which is a great option sometimes, because I ain't paying $70 for five models. You're out of your mind, GW. No, in this video, I want to focus on the other meeting, which is basically substituting another mini manufacturer's range in as your army. And some light scratch building too. Sometimes this is referred to as a counts as army, but you know what I'm talking about. Let's, let's not get lost in semantics. Now, a word of warning. If you're playing at GW stores or at GW sanctioned events, you may not be able to use armies like this. But for Basement Hammer or playing at mostly friendly local game stores, nobody's gonna have any issues with it. And if they do, well, they're probably not the folks you wanna be playing with anyway. You know? You can even do this for other games. But I love Warhammer, so we're gonna roll with it. One Page Rules has a boatload of 3D printable models that are tailor made to replace 40k and AOS armies, although they do require some 3D printing. Creature Caster makes amazing demons and demon accessories that are perfect for, well, demons. And don't even get me started on the laundry list of historical minis that are perfect for playing a Cities of Sigmar army. Probably the most popular manufacturer to do this with is Mantic, and that's whose models I'll be using today. They have a bunch of fantasy and sci-fi armies ripe with conversion possibilities. Come on, are you telling me you'd rather pay Games Workshop 60 bucks for 20 of these versus paying Mantic 35 for 40 of these? Get out of here. Recently I stumbled upon the Veermin line of space rats from their firefight and dead zone games. And all I could think was, Skaven Sky Pirates. Looking through this line of minis, my brain went crazy with ideas. What if this sweet looking turret was a night judicator? Maybe all these could fly using warp stone. That's super weird. Why are those nipples so prominent? These red ogre arms would make great drill cannons. But I had a tournament coming up, so I needed to cull all the different options in front of me and start with a list. In AOS terms, this consisted of an engine master on dirigible suit, which allowed me to take Sky Wardens as battle line, two of course, two boats to fly high, basically teleporting my dudes every single turn. At least I could do that until GW took it away with the newest book. <sighs> look, look, I get that it's a command ability now, but that's just not the same, and you know it. If you can't tell already, this was created before the new Battle Tome came out, and I'm not super happy with the new one. For the second leader, I took a chemist, which in turn took a spell in the bottle, allowing him to autocast one endless spell each game. My choice was, of course, the Warp Lightning Vortex, which I also can't use with the new book. <sighs> I, I, I don't even know what to do anymore. I, I played like five games, now I don't want to play the army. Now, even though the chemist can cast an endless spell, it's still technically not a wizard. So I brought in a Knight Encanter as an ally, with her sweet, sweet auto unbind. And all that brought me to a total of 995 points. Nice. If I wanted to purchase this all from GW, we'd be looking at $323.50. But using the Veer Min Starter Force from Mantic, a couple of scale model tank kits, and a bag of these sick gems, I was able to cut the total down to 130. Plus, you know, some random bits and bobs I had left over from previous builds. Now let me show you how we can put all these together and come out with a Warhammer Force. We're gonna start with the bulk of the army, Balloon Boys. For the Sky Warden, I used the basic Veerman troops. Give him some balloon holding backpacks. Fill a nice hole on top to attach a chain blast to. And started to build a contraption from some circly bits that I think came from the innards of a kid's toy I used to build my giant stompa. These just happen to have these nice little prongs on them, which are perfect to hold these green plastic gemstones after I drilled some holes in them. 
These little yellow bits are scale model hubcats from the tank kits, which have a nice little prong on them. I use those as a support to wrap some jewelry chains around. Ran the chains through each model's clasp and used a metric ass load of super glue to lock things in place. When the glue dried and the fumes dissipated, I capped off each pack of gems with a nice little gear and wrapped everything up in chains. I wanted these to feel like the rats have some sort of control over the warp stones, but it's tenuous at best, and they really need to secure them to keep them from going just absolutely haywire. My general was also a balloon boy, an engine master in dirigible suit. I used this big boy, a Veerman Night Terror for the mini. For this Papa Rats balloons, I basically did the same thing, but with a few more gemstones and a couple extra greeblies here and there. With the balloon boys out of the way, we can tackle the two foot heroes, and they're pretty easy. For the Night in Cancer, I used the Matriarch with her gloriously exposed nipples. And for the chemist, I used a Veer Min Progenitor, because he has a sweet little flamethrower thing. Look at that thing, it's awesome. No scratch building or alterations needed for these ones, they're good to go. For the chemist spell in a bottle, I simply glued together a few gems on three 40 millimeter bases, leaving me with a great representation of a warp lighting vortex. Last things to whip up were the gun haulers, which I built primarily using some 1 to 35 millimeter tank kits. I started out with the hull of a tank, but I flipped it upside down to give it more of a space age profile. Then I used a giant circular toy part to fill up the whole hole. Whole hole. And then glued down a piece of discarded medical equipment that I think looks pretty cool. This thing was part of a nebulizer, and I like its shape and little prongs on top. A lot of, a lot of prongs in this video. There's a joke there somewhere. There's a joke. Next thing was to stack up several hubcaps to create something to hold up some warp stone. In my mind, these little things can like move around to help steer the Skaven gunships and keep them level. I'll attach some gemstones to them in a bit. Don't, don't you worry. In the list, this gun hauler had a special torpedo that allowed me to do some extra mortal wounds on the charge once per battle. Situational for sure, but pretty cool. Yeah, I, I didn't use it at all that tournament. Oh well. Of course it needed a cannon, so I slapped this one on from a Gundam kit. before adding in the gemstones to each of the gemstone arm thingies. And then wrapping them all up in chains for safekeeping. The rest of the parts you see around the model are just little greeblies, little pieces of this and that to add some more visual interest to the model. With the gun haulers finished up, all I needed to do was give the army a quick slap chop paint job, throw them on some bases, and they ended up like this. Here we have it, a 100% converted Warhammer army using absolutely no models from GW. I hope you enjoyed the process, and really hope that this inspires you to go out and convert your own army. Huge thank you to all my patrons, y'all are the best. Thank you so much for helping support the channel despite my wildly inconsistent upload schedule. If you want to see how I fixed GW's biggest mistake while I made the basis for this army, you can check out this video right here. Until next time y'all, stay healthy and take care. Bye.